Welcome everyone to another video brought to you by Advocates for Direct Democracy. All right, so I wanted to talk to you about some uh, pretty disturbing news, pretty synonymous under the s system of capitalism. This is uh, honestly, it's really not a surprise. Uh, very morbid to say the least. Uh, and this is just recent news. Um, actually, it came out back in April, but this kind of surfaced uh, amongst my Facebook uh, social media friends. So I thought I would do a video about it. And again, it's just uh, another prime example of how this medical system, you know, uh, predominantly in the States is not about saving lives. It's about, uh, you know, two things, making money when you die and making money while you're sick. Um, they always want to keep you sick because they want to keep the flow of, of money going. So there is really no money in cures um, when it comes to diseases and viruses. But uh, we're going to focus on the COVID-19 cases and the, um, the claims made about how each patient or each hospital uh, gets paid more if their patients are diagnosed with COVID-19. So this is out of the USA Today. And the title is Fact Check, Hospitals Get Paid More If Patients Listed as COVID-19 on Ventilators. The claim, hospitals get paid more if patients are listed as COVID-19 and on ventilators. Uh, Senator S uh, Scott Jensen, uh, a representative out of Minnesota, a physician in, in Minnesota, was interviewed by the Ingram Angle, hosted uh, by Laura Ingram on April 8th on Fox News and claimed hospitals get paid more if Medicare patients are listed as having COVID-19 and get three times as much money if they need a ventilator. The claim was published <clears throat> April 9th by The Spectator, a conservative publication. WorldNet Daily shared it on April 10th and according to Snopes, a related meme was shared on social media in mid-April. Jensen took it to his own Facebook page April 15th, saying, in part, how can anyone not believe that the increasing, that increasing the number of COVID-19 deaths may create an avenue for states to receive a larger portion of federal dollars? Already, some states are complaining that they are not getting enough of the CARES Act dollars because they are having significantly more proportional, proportional COVID-19 deaths. Now, you see how this works, guys? Now, in the CARES Act, there was money put aside for the pandemic. So the, the more deaths you have related to COVID-19, the more money you get. So you, again, this is where the capitalist part comes in, the greed aspect of, of uh, capitalism, which is very synonymous with each other. They, I mean, they're one and the same. And um, again, it, this, motivates, this motivates hospitals to get more funding by diagnosing more people on COVID-19. Again, look, I mean, this is really, uh, this is new when it comes to, uh, you know, the greed that has taken grip of this planet. And now it's getting to the point where they're willing to sacrifice lives uh, in order to get funding. So I will continue on. So on April 19th, he doubled down on his assertion via video on his Facebook page. Jensen said, hospitals administrators might as well or might well want to see COVID-19 attached to a dis uh, discharge summary or death certificate. Why? Because if it's a straightforward garden variety uh, pneumonia that a person is admitted to the hospital for, if they're Medicare, typically the diagnosis related group lump sum payment would be 5,000. But if it's COVID-19 pneumonia, then it's 13,000. And if the COVID-19 pneumonia patient uh, ends up on a ventilator, it goes up to 39,000. Jensen clarified in the video that he doesn't think physicians are gaming the system so much as other players, such as hospital administrators, who he said may pressure physicians to cite all diagnosis, including probable COVID-19 on discharge papers or death certificates to get the higher Medicare allocation allowed under the Coronavirus Aid Relief and Economic Security Act. Past practice, Jensen said, did not include probabilities. So 
the administrators of each hospital, the, you know, the, the money chasers um, who basically are in the hospital business for, for that reason, for the money, uh, manipulate and, and pressure the physicians who are there to save lives, not kill them, to, uh, you know, to kind of sway them into tagging more people that might not have COVID-19 into being COVID-19 patients. So I will continue on. Uh, he noted in some states, including the home state of Minnesota, as well as California, list only laboratory confirmed COVID-19 diagnosis. Others, specifically in New York, list all presumed cases which allowed under guidelines from the Center for Disease Control and Prevention as of mid-April and which will result in a larger payout. Jensen said he thinks that the overall number of COVID-19 cases have been undercounted based on limitations in the number of tests available. So here's the provision in the Relief Act. The coronavirus relief legislation created a 20% premium or add-on for COVID-19 me Medicare patients. There have been no public reports that hospitals are exaggerating the COVID-19 numbers to receive higher Medicare payments. Jensen didn't explicitly make the claim he simply suggested there is an avenue to do so now that plausible COVID-19, not just laboratory confirmed, cases can be green-lighted for uh, Medicare payment and eligible for the 20% add-on allowed under the Relief Act. So, um, again, guys, this is just, it's morbid. It's, I mean, it's really sickening that they have a stimulus package which gives every American $1,200 only, which they can barely survive on. They give trillions of dollars to corporations and banks, and then they have these uh, these relief packages, uh, more like incentives to basically to incentivize hospitals to make more money off the deaths of people. Now these are loved ones. These are your uncles, your aunts, your dads, your your, your moms, your sisters, your brothers, your cousins, your friends. Okay, that are basically each body is a profit, is a price tag. All right, this is out of uh, the factcheck.org. Hospital payments and the COVID-19 death count. Okay, it's a question, Q&A. Are hospitals inflating the number of COVID-19 cases and deaths so that they can be paid more? A recent legislation pays hospitals higher Medicare rates for COVID-19 patients and treatment but there is no evidence of fraudulent reporting. Full question, are hospitals getting 13,000 per patient if they write that on the diagnosis is COVID-19 on the patient's chart and 35,000 for each patient they are on, on ventilators? I keep seeing posts on social media claiming that hospitals are over stating COVID-19 deaths because they are paid more for these deaths. The YouTube video link here is attributed to Fox News with the headlines U.S. hospitals get paid more to list patients or patients as COVID-19. Can you provide any clarification? Here's the full answer. Now we're going back to the uh, other article um, by the representative from Minnesota. And he answers it here, um, so to speak. A Minnesota state senator's recent interview on Fox News about Medicare payments for COVID-19 hospitalizations has generated a frenzy of headlines on social media suggesting that hospitals may have financial motivation when it comes to uh, when it comes to classifying cases or deaths as related to COVID-19. One website ran a story headline: "U.S. hospitals getting paid more to label cause of death as coronavirus." It called the information disturbing and the interview bone chilling. Um, numerous readers have asked us about such claims, some of which imply that hospitals are making money by simply listing patients as having the disease. When in fact, the payments reference are for treating patients. While some of the posts imply that fraud may be afoot, uh, multiply, multiply experts, or multiple experts, excuse me, told, that, uh, told us that such theories of hospitals deliberately miscoding patients as COVID-19 are not supported by any evidence. Of course, of course not. The initial comment was made by Minnesota State Senator Scott Jensen, a family physician who spoke with Fox News host Laura Ingram on April 8th about the idea that the number of COVID-19 deaths may be inflated 
Jensen was uh, responding to National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases Director Anthony Fauci, who, while answering a reporter's question about the theory, said, you will always have conspiracy theories when you have very challenging public health crisis. They are nothing but distractions. Uh, I'll read this little bit of uh, information here. Uh, in an interview with fact, factcheck.org, however, Jensen said he did not think that the hospitals were intentionally misclassifying cases for financial reasons, but that's how his comments have been widely interpreted and paraded on social media on uh, one YouTube video with Jensen's interview, viewed 42,000 times, was titled, U.S. Hospitals Get Paid More to List Patients as COVID-19. The video was then posted on, in a Facebook group called X22 Report, with a caption referencing the specific dollar amounts that read in part. This also explains the inflated amount of COVID deaths. Nearly 3,000 users share the video from the post. I'm not going to get into this because I'm just basically repeating myself here. But look, um, we live in a, in a capitalist society. Okay, again, capitalism, the bottom line is to make money, to make profit. Okay, morals, morality uh, essentially is out the window. Ethics, morality, rules. If the rules get in the way of your profits, they will be eliminated. Okay. And it's no different in a for-profit hospital system like in the States. They're there to make money. In fact, some hospitals uh, were furloughed. Uh, they furloughed some of their physicians uh, and staff because, again, they were slow. They weren't bringing in the money. So they laid them off. So I'm just saying that this system, this, this for-profit system uh, in hospitals in, in the States in my opinion, should be illegal. But when you're under a capitalist system where capitalism is king, then profits come, <laughs> come in all shapes and sizes. And, you, and, and you'll try to make money any way you can. If it's compromising the deaths of people or switching some of the information so you can make more money off it, I can guarantee you that is happening. Do I have the proof? Absolutely not. Nobody's going to have the proof. And if they, if they do have the proof, there's no way that they're going to release it because there's a lot of fears and threats, to say the least. Okay, so I um, wanna play, I wanna play this video for you, and it's about uh, 23 minutes long, and it's titled, A New York City Nurse Speaks Out About Forced Deaths in Her Hospital. So, so now we're going from uh, the coronavirus where patients, uh, what were, it said that patients' uh, death tags are being switched uh, switched over um, to state that they've died from the coronavirus so that there's a um, that there's an incentive to get more money from the government and um, and now this nurse has got some pretty she's got some pretty astounding news here I mean it's really gut-wrenching it's really uh, it really is sad to to see nurses like this who truly do care about their patients this is the world we're living in today uh, people okay this is this is the harsh reality we we I mean, again it doesn't have to be this way but we choose it we choose it to be this way and again i mean it may not affect you today but it could affect you uh some other time down the down the road all right so let me play this video for you It is 8.42 New York time, and I got to my regular unit, and they took my patient away, my black guy. And now I'm getting switched units. This is exactly what happened before at the other hospital. As soon as I told somebody, and I like management and tried to advocate for my patient, they take the patient away from me, and then they move me. So, like, I legitimately don't even know what to do anymore. Like, even the advocacy groups don't give a shit about these people. Like, literally, like, black lives don't matter here. 
And I mean, that's pretty sad that somebody who is white and lives hundreds of miles away from the city gives more of a shit about these people than the actual people in the city. Like, for real. Like, I had a complete breakdown yesterday because, you know, I missed an important email to do a revision on my proposal so my proposal got canceled because I was trying to advocate for my patient and talk to management here and get the care that he needs because he's being medically mismanaged um and I just had a complete fucking breakdown because you know what my entire proposal got canceled because I you know wasted my time advocating for a fucking patient who's just gonna die anyway (sighs) you know and sure enough they take the patient away from me and then Almost two hours into the shift, they switch the units. This is exactly what happened at the other hospital when I was advocating for the little Hispanic lady. You know, guys, here's the thing. Let me try and put things into context for you, okay? I know not everybody's going to live. I'm not that fucking green or ignorant or you know, bright-eyed and bushy-tailed to think that, okay? I know we're going to have a shit ton of people die. But these people aren't dying from COVID. Let me give you several examples here. Uh, An anesthesiologist um, intubated the patients, like, I think it was right, uh, like, bronchi and of a patient and they couldn't get the sats up and for about five hours like we were waiting on a chest x-ray to confirm that the placement was wrong and in the meantime while we're waiting for that we've told the anesthesiologist that it was placed wrong because like literally only one side of his fucking chest is like inflating um he dies okay um a patient had a heart rate of 40 and the resident started doing chest compressions on him, which is not what you do. You just externally pace them or you, you know, give him some atropine. And then, you know, I run in there to stop him from doing chest compressions on somebody with a fucking pulse. And then he decides to push Epi. He throws some pads on them, on him to, to defibrillate the guy in bradycardia. Okay. He has a heart rate of 40 in a stable, you know, bradycardic rhythm, we just need to give him some, like some atropine and pace him. He fucking defibrillates him and kills him. And I was literally ran out of like the patient's room to get like the director of nursing who was standing out there. And I'm like, can you stop him? He's going to kill that patient. He's going to kill that patient if he defibrillates him with bradycardia and a heart rate of 40. And the director of nursing just shook his head and I turned around and he killed the dude. Okay. There was a nurse who played placed an NG tube into you know, um into some guy's lungs and filled his lungs with tube feeding. There was a nurse who confused uh, a long ax- acting insulin with a short acting acting insulin and gave thirty units of a fast acting acting insulin and killed the guy. <sighs> what else? Other stuff have I seen? Yeah, it's just here they're just going to let them rot on the vet. They're medically mismanaging these patients. And, like, I'm not a doctor, guys. I'm not professing to be a doctor by any means. But there's, like I said, basic standards of care that we have to do. Like, when somebody's low on blood, like, literally on the brink of a critical low blood level, we should replace the blood. But I asked the residents, and they're like, does he have internal bleeding? And I said, no. And they're like, well, we're not replacing the blood. Well, here's the thing. In these COVID patients, they all eventually need a blood transfusion. Their blood, like, if you don't have enough blood to actually oxygenate your body, the vent settings don't fucking matter, okay? (laughs) They don't matter because you have no oxygen-carrying capacity of your blood, okay? (sighs) I told you about the patient where, like, all that, like, purulent drainage just kept seeping into his lungs because the ET tube cuff was leaking and nobody has a fucking manometer here to check the pressures. And I finally figured that out. And I kept saying, hey, you know what? His white blood cell count is steadily, like, you know, we're having a problem with it. Like, do you want to start some antibiotics? 
no, well, does he have a fever? And I said, no, he doesn't have a fever. They didn't want to start antibiotics. Day shift nurse finally got a chest x-ray. He has full-blown pneumonia now. Like, I've been telling them this for a while, but because he didn't have a fever, they didn't want to give him antibiotics. <sighs> we have a nurse who, like, fell asleep at the fucking nurse's station while we were all in rooms, and her norepinephrine ran out, and the guy had no fucking blood pressure, and he didn't perfuse his brain, and now I'm pretty sure he's brain dead. That same nurse is now running a CRRT machine, a dialysis-like machine, that she has never done before. She said she'll figure it out, okay? I'm pretty fucking smart, and I figure a lot of shit out, but I would never attempt to try and figure out a CRRT machine on the fly. Like, we are adequately staffed. There's a shit ton of staff in there, like, and we have a nurse who does the RRT in there. She has a different patient load. We told them, like, hey, let's just swap these nurses so the one that knows how to work this machine can work this machine. But they didn't want to do that. So I'm pretty sure that patient will be dead here in a couple hours. And this is why I freaked the fuck out yesterday. Because nobody is listening. They don't care what is happening to these people. They don't. I'm literally coming here every day and watching them kill them. I mean, we're not going to save everybody. That's fine. Like, come on, guys. We're not God. But, like, some of these people, hey, we know that they're not going to live. Let's start a hospice unit or something, you know? Like, they don't need to be in the ICU. Let's change course. Let's do palliative care or something. Like, literally, some of these people are just on sedation to keep them on the vents. Nothing else. I have a lady on a trank on a vent, and she's not even fucking cognizant. She's not even on sedation. You know what we give her every day? We give her breathing treatments, albuterol, and uh, she gets uh, insulin. And that's it. That's it. We're not treating the COVID, guys. Like, for real, we're not treating the COVID. You know, every day we try and get these guys off the vents, right? Because, you know, there's criteria for weaning. Every day, the day shift nurse will wean them down, like, to, like, minimum sedation. Every night, we come in and we get the same two residents and they fucking max out all the sedation again and undo all the work from the day shift. Then the day shift attending will come in and they'll all do rounds and they'll be like, he wasn't synchronizing with the vent. So we had to turn all the sedation on. And I'm like, he wasn't synchronizing with the vent because it's in the wrong vent mode. So, I legit don't even know what to do anymore. Like, I tried calling advocacy groups. I tried talking with management here, like the nursing admin. Like, nothing. Nobody's doing anything. We still have a 100% mortality rate in the ICU unit. I just left. But, I mean, they're living longer because we have, like, legit ICU nurses there. So... CDC finally, like, not the CDC, FDA approved yesterday the remdesivir study, like, to start using remdesivir for uh, COVID patients. <laughs> Guys, I don't even know what to do anymore. And this is why it had a complete fucking breakdown. Like, I literally had to call my friend Lisa and FaceTime her and she answered the fucking phone while she was in the shower because she like knew I was having a hard time to talk to her because it's like going in the fucking twilight zone. Like everyone here is okay with this. Look, the only way I can kind of put this into context for everybody is, and this is going to be kind of an extreme example, this is like really the only thing I can come up with. It's like if we were in Nazi Germany and they were like taking the Jews to go put them in a gas chamber, I'm the one like there saying, hey, this is not good. This is bad. This is wrong. We should not be doing this. And then everyone tells me, hang in there. You're doing a great job. You can't save everybody. You're, you know, you're amazing. You're a great nurse. 
guys, I know I'm a fucking good nurse. I know I go in there and I give it 500% every day. I know I'm not being negligent. Okay? I fucking know that. What I need is someone to help me save these people from being killed. Okay? From gross negligence and complete medical mismanagement. And no one is listening to me. All right, so there you have it. It's a pretty, uh, pretty scary a testimony by this nurse here, but uh, I'm sure there's a lot of nurses uh, who are having to deal with um, with this type of uh, situation. Um, and again, it's it, you know, it's just it, it comes down to people being scared. Okay, it's it, it comes down to people being afraid to speak out and calling out all the wrongs and calling out the management uh, in a hierarchy system. You see, because that's a problem with today's society. We have a top-down system and all the orders come from the top. And again, if you, if you speak against, if you speak out against that, then you'll be vilified, blackballed, black sheeped. And uh, this nurse has a lot of courage. Now, again, I have, I have uh, tons of respect for nurses and doctors and physicians who truly do save a lot of lives. But uh, sort of stuff like this happening now shouldn't happen. And again, under, the, uh, under a capitalist system, it is allowed to happen for the sake of profits. So we definitely need a new change, a new direction. All right, guys, I want to thank everybody for watching this video. Please share it. Please subscribe. Please hit the notification bell to get future videos. And until next time, guys, take care.